during the first week of November 2022, I traveled to Los Angeles, California to attend Quentin Tarantino's book tour in support of Cinema Speculation, a work of nonfiction that presents the director's thoughts and theories on various film-related topics. The event was held at the Theater at the Ace Hotel, beautiful theater in downtown L.A., It was a phone-free event with just under 1,600 people in attendance. During his time on stage, Tarantino shared insight into how the book came together and expanded on some of the ideas presented in its 370 pages, closing the evening with a reading from the book. In celebration of the release of Cinema Speculation, Quentin Tarantino's movie theater, the New Beverly Cinema, was presenting movies highlighted in the book, for the entire month of November. Steve McQueen's most popular film, Bullet, was screening on two of the nights I was there, so you know I had to go to both showings. All films, previews, and commercials presented at the 300-seat Art House Theater are in 35mm, and as was the case on the Friday night screening of Bullet, Quentin Tarantino often visits the new Beverly to enjoy popcorn and a flick. Probably the most famous movie theater in Los Angeles is Grauman's Chinese Theater on the historic Hollywood Walk of Fame on Hollywood Boulevard, which opened in 1927 with the premiere of Cecil B. DeMille's The King of Kings. It still hosts festivals and premieres, and its forecourt is always occupied as it is the home to handprints, footprints, and autographs of iconic film stars like Steve McQueen. Almost right across from where the bullet star put his hands and feet in cement, you can see his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, a sidewalk entertainment museum with over 2,500 stars donning the names of famous entertainers and fictional characters. This fascinating looking building is the Peterson Automotive Museum, one of the world's largest museums of its kind, with over 100 vehicles on display in its 25 gallery All remaining vehicles are kept in a vault on the building's basement level. I visited the museum to see Steve McQueen's Jaguar XKSS, which I was informed of only when I got there, was unavailable to view because it was being serviced. I could have seen the car from the Reavers, however, it was in the vault and would cost me an additional $25 to see. Uh, no thanks. One morning, I decided to walk through Runyon Canyon to visit Steve McQueen's former Solar Drive home at 2419 Solar Drive in Nicholas Canyon, just north of Hollywood Boulevard. Built in 1958, this mid-century post beam house served as the inspiration of the name of Steve's production company, Solar Productions, and was also once owned by director Wes Craven. Barney's Beanery is a chain of pubs in the greater LA area. Way back in the day, this West Hollywood location was popular with stars like Clark Gable, Errol Flynn, Judy Garland, and Rita Hayworth. And in the late 60s, it attracted rockers like Jim Morrison, and it was the last place Janis Joplin visited before her death in October 1970. Quentin Tarantino allegedly wrote most of the screenplay for Pulp Fiction here and mentions the pub in his novel, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, as the location for Rick Dalton and Steve McQueen's best of three pool match. McQueen did actually frequent the beanery in real life, receiving strange looks from other patrons for ordering ice in his beer. Another place visited by Rick Dalton in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood with a strong connection to LA's past is Musso and Frank Grill on Hollywood Boulevard, Hollywood's oldest restaurant opening in 1919. This was a bucket list visit for me, being a huge fan of the aforementioned Tarantino movie as well as a fan of classic Hollywood. I didn't want to be the kook taking video in such a fine establishment, but I did take this quick clip from my seat, which was apparently Apparently the same seats Brad Pitt and George Clooney sat in in Ocean's Eleven. 
Pacific Theater's Cinerama Dome makes a brief appearance in Tarantino's award-winning 2019 film. Located on Sunset Boulevard, this theater was designed to exhibit widescreen Cinerama films. The dome opened in November 1963 when it premiered the madcap comedy It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. The theater closed temporarily in March 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but there are plans to reopen. Here's another movie house from Once Upon a Time, the Fox Theater in Westwood Village, which Margot Robbie's character Sharon Tate walks past. The Spanish Mission style theater was built in 1930 and opened in August 1931. When built, the Fox, along with the theater across the street from it, the Bruin, were part of a Mediterranean style village development adjoining the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA. The Fox Theater's most noticeable feature is the 170-foot Spanish Revival Tower, which looms over the Broxton and Weyburn Avenues intersection. The intersection is also home to the Bruin, where Robbie's character watches the Wrecking Crew. The theater opened in 1937 and is named after the UCLA mascot, Joe Bruin. Like the Fox, the Bruin has been designated by the Los Angeles Culture Heritage Commission as a historic cultural monument. Not far from the theaters is the Hammer Museum, a UCLA-affiliated art museum and cultural center, open free to the public. You don't have to pay. You just walk in, get a ticket. To my surprise, they were presenting a Joan Didion exhibit celebrating the new journalism pioneer's life and work. I particularly enjoy Didion's writings from the 1960s through the late 1970s, some of which focus on Hollywood, the counterculture movement, and pop culture moments and characters like the Manson family and the Connected Murders, an event that is alluded to in Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. the 1960s counterculture movement, Laurel Canyon was the Los Angeles equivalent to San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury neighborhood. After thousands of years of being inhabited by the area's indigenous people, the canyon became a celebrity hideaway with members of Hollywood settling in the area in the 1940s and 50s and rock musicians taking over the area in the 60s and 70s. The Laurel Canyon Country Store, located on the former site of a hunting lodge, served the canyon's residents, becoming a meeting place for music legends such as Cass Elliott, Joni Mitchell, Frank Zappa, Neil Young, members of the Birds, and Jim Morrison of the greatest LA rock band of all time, The Doors. Jim Morrison and his longtime partner Pamela moved into a house kitty corner to the Canyon Country Store, which is immortalized in the song Love Street as the store where the creatures meet. Today, the store still celebrates its hippie heritage and has an annual picture day where the Laurel Canyon residents come together for a group photo. This is the Alta Cienega Motel, located on La Cienega Boulevard in West Hollywood. Jim Morrison lived in room 32 off and on in the late 60s. His room was located right above this gate, and when the motel is open, one can stay there for a premium price. Unfortunately, the motel is temporarily closed, and I couldn't find anyone to bribe to let me in to see the space once occupied by the Doors vocalist. Jim Morrison not only spent plenty of time at the Laurel Canyon Country Store, 
He also spent time here, the building that once housed The Doors Workshop, where the band worked out and recorded their final studio album as a quartet, L.A. Woman. Their office was upstairs and a recording studio was on the main floor. Supposedly, Jim Morrison recorded the vocals for the album in this bathroom to get a fuller sound. Now home of Tale of the Pup, an iconic Los Angeles, California hot dog stand actually shaped like a hot dog, the restaurant celebrates the building's heritage and most famous former tenants with several plaques. The iconic Chateau Marmont is another spot Jim Morrison stayed at for a brief period. Located on Sunset Boulevard, the hotel was modeled loosely after a royal retreat chateau in France and is well known as both a long and short term residence for celebrities. The hotel has 63 rooms, suites, cottages and bungalows and if you want a detailed history of the chateau, I encourage you to read The Castle on Sunset, Life, Death, Love, Art and Scandal at Hollywood's Chateau Marmont by Sean Levy. It's an excellent book that chronicles stories about John Belushi, Lindsay Lohan, Natalie Wood and many more Hollywood stars. Some of Chateau Marmont's former guests and visitors have settled here at the Pierce Brothers Westwood Village Memorial Park and Mortuary. The cemetery was founded as Sunset Cemetery in 1905, but had been used for burials since the 1880s. Renamed its current name in 1926, this place is filled with entertainment industry icons like Natalie Wood, Marilyn Monroe, Dean Martin, Billy Wilder, as well as everyday folk. This is the kind of place I could have spent the whole day. But because of my schedule, I paid my respects to one of my favorites, Natalie Wood and Marilyn Monroe, and headed off to my next Hollywood site. Another famous resting place for entertainment elite in LA is the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, a full-service cemetery, funeral home, crematory, and event center that regularly hosts concerts and movie screenings. Founded in 1899 on Santa Monica Boulevard, the cemetery is one of the city-state's oldest. Douglas Fairbanks, Mickey Rooney, Cecil B. DeMille, Johnny and Dee Dee Ramone, Peter Laurie, Tyrone Power are resting here as well as Judy Garland who was moved to her burial spot from New York in 2017. This was my first time exploring LA. It was an amazing trip that allowed me to experience so many places and spaces I've wanted to see for years, but there is still so much more I want to see. I cannot wait to get back and take in more of what Hollywood has to offer. <laughs>